5280 Sports Network on scene here. Sports Authority here. Field in Mile High. Matt Smith, Rich Kurtzman. Hey, everybody. What a game. Buffs win 44 to 7. It was a beatdown from start to finish. The Buffs got out early and they really never looked back. And, Rich, I, I think that most people expected CU to win, but I really don't think they expected it to be like that. Yeah, I mean, biggest loss in co Coach Mike Bobo's. Uh, tenure here at Colorado State. Of course, he's only coached one season and now this first game, but 44 to 7, nobody really saw that coming. I mean, as I asked uh, Nick Stevens after the game, it seemed like every single thing went Colorado's way, nothing went Colorado State's way. Dalen Dawkins also agreed. Dalen, of course, was the only basic bright spot for Colorado State's entire offense until Faton Bauta came in during garbage time and was able to score a touchdown, but everything went Colorado's way. I mean, they were dominant up front. They were dominant running the ball, and Sefo had a great game, didn't, yeah. wouldn't you say? Yeah, I really do think Sefo came out and played. It was encouraging, I think, not just for the program, but for all the fans to see that he's mm -hmm. back and he's healthy from that list right. Frank injury. I mean, he, he really commanded the offense well. They moved with great tempo and pace, which was mm -hmm. something that they addressed repeatedly in the post-game press. Or that they were all very impressed with how fast they played, and I think when you're looking at you know, the fourth year in the Pac-12, that it's crucial that you play at that speed because mm -hmm. you're coming up against teams week in and week out that play that quickly. Yeah. And I think, like they said, get the first first down. It really showed tonight that they're talented, they're back, and I think that they might be a little better than we thought. Yeah, I mean, well said. Not only was the, the tempo superb for them for, from Colorado's point of view, but it was terrible from Colorado State's point of view. Mike Bobo talked about in the post-game press conference that they just didn't get set on defense. Many times we saw that and, you know, CU was able to just do whatever they wanted to at that point. They were running the ball relentlessly, throwing the short passes. Uh, as Mike Bobo said, they didn't get off their blocks. It was a terrible defensive performance all the way up and down. Of course, you have to realize, yes, the defensive coordinators changed. Uh, Tyson Summers is gone. Marty English is here uh, as the defensive coordinator, again, stepping into that role for a second time. and. Beyond that, they changed formations from the 4-3 back to the 3-4, and really you could see the inexperience, especially in the defensive backfield all game long, uh, as you know it, that pass from Sefo to Bobo yeah. down the sideline, Jordan Vaden playing his first game yeah. as a college cornerback, he just yeah. basically watched Bobo catch that ball. It was tough to watch for Colorado State Rams fans. and. They, you know, that's why a lot of them left early, honestly. Yeah, they did. They started filtering out around the 10:53 mark. We looked at each other and we said, "Well, that was fast." Yeah. And the Rams, uh, the Rams didn't show up tonight. Bubble was very upset they didn't show up tonight. Yeah. But you had to like what you saw from not only CU's offense, like we talked about, but their defense was extremely impressive. Colorado State really couldn't get much traction tonight, especially in the first half. They were shut down all over the field. CU's run defense was solid until Dalen Dawkins was really the only one who was yes. able to generate that momentum. Yeah. So moving forward, I think, you know, CU's got a bit of a lesser game against Idaho State, but one you have to be ready for. But I mean, so many things to be encouraged by, just a myriad of offensive weapons that you can go to. And I think in the Pac-12 and when you get to there, even the Michigan game in a few weeks. Right, yeah. I think that that's a, a really big plus and a positive for CU moving forward. Conversely, I mean, there wasn't really very much for Colorado State to be happy about. I mean, the offensive line was supposed to be one of their strengths, and yet they got bullied all night long by CU's defense, uh, their front seven spe specifically. Yeah. Uh, Dalen Dawkins, you know, yes, he was the lone bright spot of the offense be besides Faton Bauta's play at the very end. and and orchestrating that final touchdown drive. It took them forever to score, uh, and three seconds into the fourth quarter to be exact. Uh, but early on, Dalen Dawkins couldn't get it going. They had to put Izzy Matthews in. Izzy Matthews couldn't get it going. They even went to Marvin Kinsey, a true freshman. And all uh, 18 new players played tonight for Colorado State. And you can see that it's a new era, and not necessarily in a good way, but in a way, in a realistic way. These guys have to learn together. They have to learn to play together and learn on the fly together. And Coach Bobo said it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing for him, but also for the Colorado State name. And, you know, he's not going to allow that to happen and to continue. 
but he also took responsibility upon himself, which is what all great coaches do. And uh, Bobo's not going to let this fly, this this kind of effort, and uh, uh, obviously this execution that was very poor. You'd certainly hope so, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, next week for Colorado State, it's going to be UTSA at home for the first game of the farewell to Hughes uh, season, you know. So that's going to be a big chance for them to get back on the right side of the win-loss column and to finally show the fans and the home fans uh, you know, what Colorado State football is supposed to be about. Couldn't agree with you more. For 5280 Sports, I'm Matt Smith. This is Rich Kurtzman. Thanks for tuning in.